Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the life, death, and personality of Freddie Mercury? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. I'll start with the background of Freddie Mercury, and then I'll move to my analysis. Freddie Mercury was born in Zanzibar on September 5, 1946. At this time, his last name was Bulsara. Mercury was sent to India at age 8 to attend school. There he expressed an interest in music. He took piano lessons and formed a band at age 12. His friends noticed that he could listen to a song on the radio and play it on the piano. So right away we see that Mercury had a lot of innate talent. He had a predisposition for learning and playing music. Mercury's family moved to England in 1964. Zanzibar was a British protectorate when Mercury was born. Therefore, he was able to register as a citizen of the United Kingdom, which he did in 1969. He graduated from an art college that same year and would join a series of bands as he worked various other jobs, like being a baggage handler at Heathrow Airport. In 1970, he would form a band named Smile with Roger Taylor and Brian May. In 1971, John Deacon joined the band. Mercury renamed the band Queen and legally changed his name to Freddie Mercury. Over the next several years, the band enjoyed phenomenal success. Freddie Mercury in particular stood out as incredibly talented. In addition to a confirmed vocal range of three octaves and rumors of a four octave range, he was a prolific songwriter and a crowd-pleasing live performer. During his career, he performed in about 700 concerts all around the world. His 1985 performance at Live Aid is considered by some as the greatest live performance in the history of rock music. Most of his work was with Queen, but he also released two solo albums during his career. Moving back to the early 1970s, we see that Mercury entered into a romantic relationship with a woman named Mary Austin. A few years later, he started to have an affair with a record executive named David Mintz. After telling Mary Austin about his sexuality, their romantic relationship ended, but their friendship would persist for many years. Mercury would say that Austin was his only true friend. Mercury would have a number of romantic relationships in his life. In the early to mid-1980s, he dated an actress. He also dated a restaurant owner. In 1985, he started seeing a hairdresser named Jim Hutton. Mercury would later refer to Hutton as his husband. In 1982, Mercury began exhibiting symptoms of HIV. And according to Jim Hutton, Mercury was diagnosed with AIDS in 1987. Mercury claimed that he had tested negative for HIV, and his inner circle of friends and associates also denied stories about Mercury being ill. His increasingly thin appearance continued to fuel speculation about his health. The press reported that Mercury was seriously ill. Even though he publicly denied having an illness, he did tell his inner circle about what was going on, so they knew that he was sick. By 1991, it was clear to just about everyone that Mercury was, in fact, ill. He had discontinued working with Queen and was living in his home in West London. He wouldn't take any medications that could extend his life, Rather, he only took medications for pain. On November 23, 1991, Mercury released a public statement in which he confirmed he had AIDS. He went on to say that he kept the information private to protect those around him. He called for people around the world to fight against the disease and said he would continue his policy of not giving interviews. On November 24, 1991, the next day, Mercury died from bronchial pneumonia resulting from AIDS. He was 45 years old. His will directed the bulk of his fortune to go to Mary Austin, including his home in London, which was worth about 25 million pounds. On a prior occasion, Mary Austin had told Mercury that he should turn the mansion into a memorial site instead of giving it to her. But he decided to leave it to her, telling her, you would have been my wife and it would have been yours anyway. Now moving to my analysis. First, let's take a look at Freddie Mercury's potential personality profile. When I conceptualize personality, I often use the five-factor model. I remember the five factors through the acronym OCEAN. 
openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. We see that Freddie Mercury was high in openness to experience. He was intellectually curious, adventurous, creative, non-traditional, and experienced emotions intensely. His level of conscientiousness was probably below average. He was hardworking, but there were some indications that he was impulsive and reckless. His level of extroversion is something that is debated. He said that he was extroverted on stage, but a completely different person otherwise. People described him as quiet, shy, analytical, and reserved. He was probably lower than average in extroversion, but he was clearly able to appear high in extroversion in his work. What I find interesting is that he really valued the adoration of the crowd. This was something that many people noticed, and usually that's associated with a higher level of extroversion, people who get energy from groups rather than recharging in isolation. He also had positive emotions frequently, something that is also associated with high extroversion. He may have been a little bit below average in extroversion overall, but he was certainly flexible enough, again, to appear extroverted, and he seemed to enjoy acting in an extroverted manner. As far as agreeableness, Mercury was probably about mid-range. His level of trust may have been a little bit lower than average, but his level of altruism and modesty may have been slightly above average. Looking at the last trait, neuroticism, his level here was probably higher than average. Even though he didn't seem particularly angry, anxious, or depressed, people described him as vulnerable and sensitive, and he did appear to have difficulty resisting temptation. What really strikes me about Freddie Mercury's behavior is how he was able to compartmentalize it. Not just the extroversion on stage, but other factors as well. Looking at his level of insecurity, for example, he was confident in his professional abilities, but insecure in his personal life although his confidence when singing did take some time to develop. For example, in the beginning of his career, he would not perform alone. He joined a band because he was afraid of the criticism that he would get performing alone. He needed the other people on stage with him. Later, of course, Mercury knew exactly who he was when he was singing. He had a lot of confidence. But in his private life, he still appeared to be trying to find his way, still unsure of his place in the world. Looking at his modesty, on stage he was larger than life, but off stage he was more modest. Not extremely so, but more modest than when performing. And looking at his perfectionism, he wanted everything a certain way for his performances, but he was much less cautious in his personal life. Often there is a positive correlation between somebody's behavior professionally and personally. So if somebody's a certain way as a professional, we tend to see the same characteristics in their personal life. But with Freddie Mercury, there was a separation. He was two different people. As far as mental health, I'm not aware of any official diagnosis ever being assigned to Freddie Mercury. There is, of course, speculation about his use of substances. I think this discussion often gets overlooked because there were so many other interesting aspects of Mercury that would draw attention, like his unusual performance style on stage. It's been reported that Mercury used a tremendous amount of cocaine and alcohol so much so that he would pass out and shake violently. He overdosed several times. He would occasionally black out and wake up somewhere, having no idea how he got there. One time he woke up in a dumpster. Elton John, who was known for having his own difficulties with substances, would say that Mercury could out-party him. Interestingly, many people that knew him did not think he was addicted, but just rather overdid it once in a while. Some people believe that Mercury was addicted to sex. There seems to be less debate about this as compared to his substance use. Mercury made it pretty clear that he had an incredible sex drive, frequently had sex, and liked to have sex with multiple partners at the same time. On one occasion, he would say that he lived for sex and was extremely promiscuous. There's no way to know if Mercury's substance use or interest in sex rose to the level of psychopathology, but either way, these factors appeared to play a major part in his life. One of the questions that comes up often with Mercury is why didn't he make the details of his illness public earlier? Why did he keep it a secret from so many people for so long? There's been a lot of speculation about this. Some people believe he was trying to protect his friends and colleagues. Another theory is that he was hoping for a cure. Still others believe he was in denial, perhaps something 
that has a parallel there with his substance use. And some people believe this was just a product of his private nature. Why tell people something they don't need to know? Freddie Mercury was private throughout his entire career. He didn't like to give interviews. So it kind of makes sense that he wouldn't want to reveal his personal health information. I think in a way, all of those factors could have played into his decision. We know he did stay positive right up until the end. People said that during his last performances, he was fun to be around, as always. He had an incredible sense of humor. He didn't want to think about or talk about his illness. He focused on his work, and he worked as long as he was able to. Another thing that strikes me about Freddie Mercury is how original he was. The music industry is temperamental. It does not always reward true talent. Sometimes other creative and artistic components are necessary to be successful in that business. In the case of Mercury, he not only possessed true talent, like his singing and songwriting, but he was original. There was no other frontman like Freddie Mercury. He created a mystique which will endure for years. One of his worst fears was that his music would be boring. It was a fear that was never realized. The last item I'll cover here is the increasing popularity of Queen. In the UK, they have spent more collective weeks on the album charts than any other musical act in history. Queen's greatest hits is the best-selling album in the United Kingdom. Sometimes we see that with musicians and other celebrities that died young, their work becomes more valued after their death. It's not always clear why this happens, but whatever the reason, the music of this complex, original, and talented artist, Freddie Mercury, will live on for quite some time. Those are my thoughts on Freddie Mercury. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.